this time we're pleased to have with us student athletes from uh, Colgate. While we're waiting for the media, I'll ask each of you individually uh, your thoughts, your veteran group, another return appearance to the NCAA tournament. We'll start with Tucker, work our way down. Your thoughts on your game tomorrow? Uh, yeah, first things first, just very excited to be back here. Obviously, um, it's any kid's dream to get to March Madness and to get here multiple times like we have over the years. Um, it's super exciting. So, um, so yeah, just very excited for the opportunity and uh, hoping to uh, have a great game tomorrow. Keegan? Yeah, kind of same thing that uh, Tucker said. Just really excited to be here, but, um, you know, uh, not quite satisfied yet. So I was going to do everything we can to, to pull out a win tomorrow. But really excited to be here and uh, perform on a stage like this is, is, uh, is a dream come true. And I'm lucky enough to have it, have it a couple times. So, yeah. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, kind of similar to those two. We're excited to be back. Um, this is a special group of players and staff. Um, and just can't wait for tomorrow night to get ready to, to go compete. And Oliver? Yeah, I'll just uh, also say that it's very exciting. I mean, every time is a little bit different, so it adds to the uh, diversity of it all. But we should be excited to get out there and uh, play a tough Texas team. We do have a question on Zoom. So, Mallory? We have a question from Tom, Tommy Sladek. Tommy, when you're ready. Awesome, thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, first off, congratulations. Happy that you guys are out there. Um, I know it was Wisconsin last year that you went to. It's Des Moines now. Have you guys just been hoping for San Diego? I know that that just didn't didn't really accumulate here. We're, we're going to start with Oliver, work our way down to uh, Tucker. Oliver first. Yeah, we've uh, kind of been stuck in the Midwest, um, but I think it, it's good for us. Obviously, we wanted to maybe go to San Diego or someplace warm just because we're from uh, like upstate New York and Hamilton. But um, no, we're excited to be here, but those places did sound nice. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll second that. Definitely uh, would have been nice to go somewhere, somewhere warm, but I mean, kind of better. It's like a true neutral site game, so we're hoping, you know, last year was kind of tough. We were in Wisconsin playing against Wisconsin, so. Um, hoping that it's more of a neutral, neutral site game um, for tomorrow. Yeah, I mean it's not not much of a switch up. We're used to seeing snow come down every day in Hamilton. So, um, but yeah, obviously it would have been nice to get some sun. But we're happy to be here and happy playing in a, in a competitive game tomorrow. So we're excited. Yeah, same thing. It's almost kind of nice to be in a place like Des Moines where you really just are focusing on the basketball game and not worried about other things, um, other attractions, I guess. So um, I think it's like a blessing in disguise for us. So just excited to play the game, to be honest. We have another follow-up question on Zoom. Great answers, boys. Uh, you know, looking ahead, between Tennessee years ago and, and with Wisconsin and Arkansas, there's no doubt that you guys compete with these with these big seats. But what ultimately is it going to take to get over that hump and to be continuing to be playing uh, on Saturday? This is what time we start with Tucker, work our way down to Oliver. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be here since that Tennessee game. Um, and I think just those experiences, being in, in those games close, especially towards the end of the game, and, um, and realizing that if you make just a few more plays or if the ball bounces your way a few more times, there's a potentially a chance we win those games. Um, I think that that just gives us more confidence uh, knowing that we can hang uh, with any team that we're up against if we have the right game plan and, and you know, we play the way we know we can. So, uh, yeah, I think it honestly just gives us confidence, and it's nice to have that experience going into tomorrow's game. Yeah, um, I mean, Tucker's had one more one more game in March Madness than, than some of us. But, um, I mean, we, we're not that surprised when, when we're hanging around with those teams um, in the second half. It's just something we kind of expect, expect out of ourselves um, at this point. And we, it's what we expect tomorrow. And, um, you know, we got together and kind of kind of talked as a team. And we all said what we, what we thought um, would have to be, like, a little bit different or what how experiences have helped us. And, obviously, um, we have some guys with a lot of experience. So, yeah, we're excited. Yeah, I mean, we know we can compete with these guys um, uh, just because years past we have. And it's going to take a full 40 minutes. I think that's one thing we've been stressing. Um, in the years past, it's kind of we've kind of had like a lull in the game where we haven't gone on a scoring run or something like that. Um, so just full 40 minutes, and we're going to have a good game plan to just go out and execute that to the best of our ability. Staying with Zoom here. Yeah, I think uh, a full 40 minutes for sure. And playing the way we want to play, don't let the other team kind of affect how we're going to play. You know, Arkansas, we had a good first half. And then last year at Wisconsin, you know, we were up for most of the game until like about the final seven minutes where we really couldn't score. So we just got to play a full 40 minutes and see how it goes from there. 
We have another question from Mario Sacco with News Channel 9. Mario, when you're ready. Hi, guys. Uh, congratulations once again. Uh, what's Matt Langle meant to each one of you guys? Start off with Tucker again. Yeah, um, you know, he's the coach that uh, kind of took, I don't want to say a gamble on me, but I didn't have any offers coming out of high school. Um, and so he kind of um, put his faith in me coming into my freshman year. And he's been um, the best mentor and leader that I could have ever asked for ever since then. Um, a true leader and, and um, just great man in my life outside of basketball even. And so I know I'm going to keep that connection um, after after this is all over. But uh, but just a tremendous coach and someone who, who really just understands and gets it outside, like on the court and off the court. He just gets it. Um, and so him and the other coaches have just put us in a really good position uh, to go make something happen tomorrow and have another chance. Yeah, kind of a similar story to Tucker. I didn't have uh, many offers coming out of high school. Um, and Coach Langle obviously took a chance on me, and it's, it's been working out so far. But, but like Tucker said, I mean, on and off the court, I've learned so many things these past four years from Coach that I'll, that I'll keep with me for the rest of my life, whether it be basketball or not. Um, and I'm, I'll be forever grateful for that, that he took a chance on me and I, that I've been able to learn so much over these years. Um, it's just been incredible. So, yeah. Coach Lango also gave me my only offer. Um, so I'm definitely appreciative of that. But, I mean, I think the basketball uh, speaks for itself. Um, but just like all the life lessons you get, you know, um, through, through the game that he teaches, I think I'll definitely take with me. And I think that's, that's one thing that makes him really special as a coach. Yeah, I had a little different experience because I transferred in, so I got to experience one environment and coming to a second, and it's just kind of changed my life. Not only uh, Coach Lingo as a coach, but also just a mentor, and you know, he strived to, what something that I wanted was to be pushed every single day, he did that both on and off the court, so I can't be more thankful for that. We've got a question uh, in the front row here on the left side, go ahead. You, you use the microphone, sir, please, thanks. Montredave Daily Texan. Um, Texas has a lot of length and on their perimeter and in their defensive scheme and a lot of athletes. What's it going to take for you all to overcome that and um, play your game? Start with Keegan this time. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something we talked about. Um, just got to focus on, on our game plan and what we think what we can do best. Um, I think we have a really good, good offensive attack. Um, we can score from, some, from all over the court. Um, just so basically just it comes down to making the right decisions, and we, I think we have a lot of guys that trust each other um, when it comes to that. So, so yeah, just making the right decisions, I would say. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think attention to detail um, is definitely going to be more important. Obviously, way bigger, faster, stronger than any teams we see in our league. So just understanding that and realizing that going into the game um, and then having that mindset, I think, will help um, just prepare us for that. Yeah, I think it's just not getting, you know, sped up or letting the length and athleticism affect us. Um, just playing our game and, you know, maybe the first option might not be there for us, but it's just making the passes that we're capable of making, just keep moving the ball and stuff will open up for us. Yeah, I mean, it's something that's hard for us to replicate in our league and in practice um, just because we don't go up against guys like that every day. Um, so I think that settling into the game is going to be really important and, and figuring out the game that we're in and how they're going to guard us, um, how they're going to attack us is really important because um, we haven't played a team like them, but they also haven't played a team like us um, for most of the season. So um, I think it kind of goes both ways. And we're, like Keegan said, we're just ready to execute our game plan. And if we do that, I think uh, we'll have a chance. I have a couple minutes left. Uh, stay on the left side. My name is William Hanna from the NCAA. So Colgate is the Patriot League champion. For those that aren't familiar with the Patriot League who are going to be watching it tomorrow, how is the Patriot League different from so many other leagues play basketball? We start with Oliver. Work our way back toward me. Um, I think it's a, like a high IQ league with a lot of, you know, you know, Princeton type offenses, a lot of uh, shooting um, and a lot of, you know, movement without the ball, I would say, uh, from my three years within the Patriot League. Um, and a lot of guys that have gone on and played at high major schools. So there's a lot of good, uh, good competition within the Patriot League. Yeah, definitely you see a lot of good shooting um, within the league, um, kind of what Oliver just said, high IQ players. Um, not as much length as what you'll see, like, uh, in the non-conference and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, definitely a, a good brand of basketball, I think. Yeah, just building off <clears throat> both those. Um, a lot of really good shooters and a lot of guys have, you know, left the Patriot League to, to be successful in, in, at those higher, higher Division One schools. Um, but, I mean, there are a lot of great players, but there's not as much, like, one-on-one -on -one basketball, I would say, not as much isolation play. It's a lot of, um, you know, team basketball in the Patriot League, and I think that's, 
something that a lot of the, the teams represent in that league. Yeah, um, same thing all those other guys said. I think that uh, teams in our league like scout really well and are really well prepared for um, what other teams run um, because you see a lot of similar stuff around the league. Uh, and yeah, just a lot of really good connected team basketball um, in a lot of those teams. And uh, luckily, we've been at the top of that for the last couple of years. Fellas, we're going to go to the uh, left side, second row here with a question. Yeah, um, you all have one of the best three-point shooting offenses in the country. Um, that's going to be a big part, big part of your game plan. Um, on the other end of the floor, what's your guys' what are some important factors you're going to keep in mind to stop um, some of Texas' perimeter scoring and then their two big men down low? Go ahead, start Oliver. Uh, I would. I'm going to say we just got to contain a lot of uh, dribble drive and try and play more so like one on five, not one on one. Which they're if they're playing one on one, it's not going to be a good day for us. So we got to be all connected, everyone playing defense uh, on the same page and kind of gapping up a lot of drives. Yeah, I mean a couple of things that are easier said than done, but I think we got to stop them in transition to start and then just finish possessions. I think. We'll be able to get them to take tougher shots, but just getting the rebound will be a huge key to this game. And just cause once we get the rebound, I think we can we can get out and, and play a little bit. But that's going to be uh, the first thing we have to do is secure the rebound. Yeah, uh, I agree with both these guys. I think um, you know playing team defense, we get all five guys got to be connected out there, um, no matter what they're trying to do on offense. And then coming down that rebound, can't give them second chance opportunities. Um, yeah. Yeah, and something we've talked about all year is like our best defense uh, comes from our offense. So if we take good shots and don't turn the ball over, they're le- they're gonna have less opportunities in transition. Um, so I think it really just starts on the offensive end, having good possessions on offense, and then another big key, obviously, is just rebounding in a game like this for us. One final question for our student athletes. Anybody out there? Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Best of luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. I'd like to welcome uh, Coach Matt Langle from the Colgate Raiders, the number 15 seed in the Midwest region. Automatic qualifier after winning the Patriot League Championship. They own a school record 26-8 and eight mark while making their third straight trip to the NCAA tournament and fourth in the last five years. The Raiders will play number two seed Texas at 625 uh, tomorrow night. Without further ado, Coach, welcome to Des Moines. Your thoughts on the game tomorrow? Uh, my thoughts on the game, I'm really proud of our group. Uh, obviously, it's, they've continued to accomplish great things and, and set marks for our school and in our conference. Um, they're an absolute joy to coach. Uh, I think quite often this year I, I've just tried to stay out of their way, their, their experience, their camaraderie, to their togetherness. It's, uh, it's what every coach should, should have a chance to coach. Specific to Texas, yeah, we've got a great challenge in front of us. They're a really good team. Uh, they've been through their own share of adversity this season. They've responded like the champions that they are. Uh, they get after you on the defensive end, and I, I think that that'll be something we'll have to manage. Obviously, they're a handful to guard themselves. We'll have to be a team of defenders um, You know, if we're going to be in a competitive game like we have in the past years. This time we're opening it up for questions. we got a Zoom call. Go ahead, Mallory. This question comes from Tommy Sel- Seldeck. Tommy, when you're ready. Hey, Matt, you got me? Yep, you're, you're good. Awesome. So, Matt, right before uh, you came up here, Tucker and Keegan and those guys were talking about you know, the opportunity you gave them to, to play basketball at Colgate and out for a few of them, you, know, you gave them their only offer. 
I know they're all their specific style of player, but is there something or an attribute that they have that they all have that you look for in your players when you're recruiting? It's a great question. I, and I think they do share something that, that is really important. Um, they're all winners and they're all workers. And so do they all have individual aspirations and goals and dreams that are different from one another? Yeah, for sure. But I think that how they go about their work, how they go about uh, being a teammate, uh, how much they value um, their opportunities, um, their chances to, to be students at Colgate, to be a part of the academic life, to, to go to practice every day, to get workouts in. You know, two of them were up early this morning watching film before everybody else. So um, we learned that about them in the process uh, from their coaches, from their families, just, and those things impact winning. And so we're really lucky to, to have them as part of our program. Any follow-up there? Okay, we're going to go left side, coach on the aisle. Uh, CJ Moore at The Athletic. Uh, I was curious about, se- I think, was it your seventh or eighth year you, you won the league for the first time? What, what was it that you felt like changed, um, or what was it that, that you know, you re- really helped you turn the corner there um, several years into, into your tenure, and, and also maybe speak to the, the patience that sometimes it takes to, um, to really turn a program? Yeah, I think there's there's we're a process driven program and organization, and so winning a championship is a result of the process. So in year four, if I if I got my years correct, we finished in second place. Um, we got upset in the semifinals, the championship game. A lot of guys, we had an old team. Um, those guys left and graduated. We actually took some steps backwards in the next couple of years, but the same foundation was in place, the same culture, the same, you know same characteristics that I was just talking about of those other guys and so it took us a few more years we obviously you know we got a little lucky along the way too a rapless Ivanowskis transferred from Northwestern Jordan Burns turned us down and to go to a division two school in Texas before he changed his mind and decided to come both of those guys ended up being player of the year Will Raymond so we got some guys that you know ended up maybe taking us a little bit higher in that uh um hierarchy of what it takes to kind of get over the hump in, in champions and now that that has continued to go we've had some really good freshmen who have grown into really good players to have been you know now player of the year in Tucker and so you know that cycle has continued itself but I, I think to answer the question about the patience um, I, I'm so grateful for Colgate for our leadership for our from our president on down we've had a few different athletics directors uh, but they really, because of the institutional mission of um, doing things the right way and, and being on the right path and student-athlete experience and growth and development, all, all mattering as well as winning, um, I think allowed me as a young coach um, that time to grow and develop and, and build those things that, that we're all getting to, to see out there now on, on the court. Him and, and what do you tell his, your guys about his, his pump fake and maybe what have you thought of watching his pump fake? Yeah, I played at the University of Pennsylvania, graduated in, in 2000. I didn't play with him, but we had a big guy named Tim Krug who had a similar pump fake. He didn't really even ever shoot that many three-point shots, but everybody would go for his pump fake. I think it's one of those things you, you can't adjust to it. So we, we talked about it. We showed it on film. It's really impressive. But what's more impressive is he, his IQ as a basketball player to me is – is really good. He makes great decisions, uh, when to shoot, when to pass. He facilitates. He, he comes off the bench. I mean, he's one of their more valuable players, if you ask me. Um, and you can only play so many minutes when you when you play that role of coming off the bench. And uh, he can affect the game defensively, offensively. I, I think he's a really smart. Uh, he's really talented too, but he's a really smart basketball player. And uh, his shot fakes and his ball fakes are probably just a microcosm of of his intelligence. Coach, you're going to go back for another Zoom call. We have a question from Mario Sacco from News Channel 9. Mario, when you're ready. Thanks for the smile, Coach. Uh, What would a win tomorrow mean for a program like you guys uh, that's been building and building and building? It would mean we would get to stay here where there's less snow on the ground, Mario, than there is where you are right now. Um, Jokes aside, yeah, I mean, this group – 
when they set out at the beginning of this season and Oliver and Tucker chose to come back to continue to study at Colgate to play this season at Colgate when they could have done other things which has happened across the landscape of college basketball um, you know one of their goals was to you know try and win one of those games against a, a big high profile team like we did against Syracuse one of their goals was to win the Patriot League regular season because it gives you home court advantage in the in the playoffs uh, which gives you your best chance to win uh, the Patriot League tournament um, which they also did to get back to this stage because they wanted another chance uh, to try and win one of these games. And so, you know, to see a group achieve all they have and now have the opportunity, yeah, it'd be um, just a, another step along the way, I think, and, and something that would be mean a great deal for, for them and the program and the school, but, you know, mostly in my mind for, for them to be able to achieve something else that no one thought they would be able to do. Another question on Zoom? We have another question from Noah Ram. Noah, when you're ready. <clears throat> hey Matt. Uh, speaking of the uh, the weather, I know you guys had a little bit of trouble getting out of getting out of Central New York. Can you just talk about how that's you know if that's had any effect on the team and how the team has been able to overcome that? Yeah, we we've got a veteran group of guys with a lot of experience. They're really grounded. Uh, they're down to earth. And so you know when we told them they were going to have to you know we're going to leave the parking lot at 7:25, they were there, bags packed. Um, you know, it didn't take us the full two hours to make the one hour trip that everybody thought it would. Uh, we got stuck on the tarmac for a little bit longer, but we didn't get stuck like another plane did. Um, so we got off and we got here and yesterday was a long day, but we had a great practice and guys enjoy the, the moment and the, the reception and the hospitality here in Des Moines has been great. And so now I think they'll be well rested and ready to go. It doesn't affect us in any way. Staying with Zoom. We have, okay. we have another question from Tom, Tommy Sladek. Tommy, when you're ready. Matt, you had Nellie Cummings in Pittsburgh playing last night in a pretty wild playing game. Did you able, were you able to catch any of that? And, and what's it like seeing uh, you know, Nellie move on to, to his hometown school and continue to have his success this year? Yeah, it was great. We uh, we had a team dinner pretty late last night at a restaurant uh, downtown, and they were able to put the game up on the screen. The guys are living and dying with every moment. Uh, I think it speaks to the culture that we have. You know, he Nelly graduated last December. We don't we don't have a large graduate program at at Colgate, so he had exhausted his academic opportunity, but wanted to continue to play. He's still part of our team. I mean, our guys are in contact with him all the time. Our coaching staff texting with him. Uh, I was my son was asking me questions about their team. I was texting with Nelly today. He said he's turning trying to turn the the pit guys into Colgate fans. So it's really been a joy to watch uh, him perform well. Him help to coach Capel get get Pitt back to where it is, uh, but his leadership has just been um, so obvious for me and what he's been able to do uh, help their team uh, get back to where they are. And so excited for them to get a chance to keep playing in this tournament. We have time for one more question over here on the left side, Coach Third Row by the aisle. Mantra Dave, uh, Daily Texan. Um, Y'all play a couple of um, big teams in the non-conference, Syracuse and Auburn, and obviously they're a little bit different to Texas, but they've got some similarities and really fast guards and dominant guys down low. What did you learn from those games that you're going to try and apply um, tomorrow? Yeah, I think the Auburn game and, and playing Auburn at Auburn is a different task than playing on a neutral site, but um, yeah, there's the intensity and physicality and speed of the game. Uh, is something that our guys, you know, we don't get a chance to do that every game like the Big 12 has to offer. And so, you know, adjusting to that early in the game and settling in and, you know, finding a way to run offense and uh, play defense with the appropriate angles based on, on the competition, hopefully it'll be something that not just this year, but that our guys have experienced in past years that, that'll help us uh, in the Texas game. You stay in the second row there. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Sorry if you've already answered this, but is there one aspect of Texas game that worries you the most? And since it is Texas is a big bad two seed, do you assume everybody in the arena will be rooting for you all tomorrow night? 
Yeah, we've had a lot of different experiences in the tournament. I don't know if Texas will have a lot of fans here. Texas fans will definitely be rooting for Texas. You know, last year we were in the, even though Wisconsin was the distinct favorite, um, everybody was rooting for Wisconsin. So I don't think our guys will be too worried about that. I know when we played Tennessee a few years ago and when we were competitive and playing well, everybody was cheering for us, and it was great. Uh, this Texas team is just really tough, hard nosed. They really, their their defense is is uh, intense and and puts a lot of pressure on your offense. Um, their their ability to force turnovers is is really impressive, and so we've got to uh, take care of the basketball. But they they play fast. They score in transition. They score inside. They score outside. They've, they're talented and veteran and experienced at just about every position. And so, you know, they they pose not just one threat that that is is that we're thinking about, but they're they're dangerous in a lot of ways. Thank you very much, Coach. That concludes the press conference with Colgate. Best of luck tomorrow night. Thanks. Thanks.